Okay, January 2022, end of your exam, stats and mechanics. We're on the mechanics bit now. Um, please pause the video and then play it again once you've had a go at it, if you're new to this. Um, and other than that, you should be doing your corrections. So, here we go. This is velocity. Velocity is changing as time changes. So this is not constant velocity. This is variable, sorry, not constant, so variable acceleration because we've got velocity that changes with time. So basically that's it's gotta be it. So this is where we're looking at SVA. Um, so we've got displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So back when we were doing constant velocity, the gradient would be the acceleration. And this is the case here. To get acceleration, we find the gradient of velocity, dv by dt. And when we had this as well, the area underneath the graph was the distance or the displacement. So we would integrate velocity with respect to time to get the displacement. And this process then works for the other exactly the same way. So if we have displacement to get velocity, we will differentiate displacement. So change in, change in distance over time or displacement over time is velocity. That makes sense. And to go from acceleration to velocity, we will integrate acceleration. We find the area under the acceleration curve to get there. So that is really important basically. Very important information. So that's the stuff to remember. You can go back to the straight line just to work out which is which, but if you could learn that, it'll make life a lot, lot easier. So back to the question. Here we have velocity. They want acceleration. Looking at over here, I have velocity. I want acceleration. I need to differentiate. So dv by dt equals acceleration equals 10 minus 2t. Constant disappears. That's the first question done. Okay. B. Uh, the particle is instantaneously at rest when t equals, so when t equals 6, velocity is going to equal 0. Now, interesting, but I'm presuming we've got to do something up here. So I'm going to say, okay, v, and, um, v equals 0, uh, 10 times 6 minus 6 squared minus k. Awesome. I'm going to be able to find k. So 10 times 6 minus 36 is 24. So 0 equals 24 minus k. k must equal 24. Perfect. So I'm going to scribble this out. So that is 24. Okay, brilliant. So having got that then. Oops. That again. A bit too small, probably. There we go. Right, so having got that, find the other value ooh, of t. So let's look at that equation. Let's come back again. So we've got v equals 10t minus t squared minus 24. Uh, find the value of t. So when the other value, so when v is 0, so 0 equals, I'm going to move it around, minus t squared plus 10t minus 24. And all I'm going to do is stick that in my calculator because I don't think they care whether we differentiate that or not or solve that or not. So I've got t equals 4 and t equals 6. We knew that one, so this is the answer that we're looking for. t is 4. Okay, brilliant. Done that bit. Find the total distance travelled by P in the interval 0 to 6. Okay, now, this is the goodie. So, a bit like the last one and, taking the, and drawing the diagram, please draw diagrams. I can't tell you enough. So, if we think about what we've got now from this thing here, we want the total distance. So, we know to go from velocity to distance, we have to integrate. So, I will just want to have a quick look at what the graph looks like. We know when velocity is zero, it crosses at one, two, three, four, five, six. So it crosses here and here. It's a negative 
quadratic. So we're looking at something like that probably and it crosses at minus 24. So if I make that go a bit longer and do that. So that's minus 24, that's 4 and that's 6. And it wants the total distance. So when we're looking for total distance, it's the area between the underneath the graph. So we're looking at that and that. So because we've got a negative area, this should give us a negative area. This will give us a positive area. We need to make this positive and add these two together. So we need to integrate v with respect to t between 4 and 0, which should give us a negative answer. So we're going to take it away from, to make it positive, the integral between 6 and 4, v dt. So by taking away the negative, it makes it positive. So that makes it easier. OK. All right, let's get some space. Here we go. Right, so first things first, let's integrate that. So integrating that, we've got 10t squared over 2 minus t cubed over 3 minus 24t. And we don't need the constant because we're going to integrate between 6 and 4 and take away the integral of the same thing, which is 5t squared minus t cubed over 3 minus 24t between What's the other one? 4 and 0. OK, because that makes 5. Right, sub in. Uh, 6. So 5 times 6 squared minus 6 cubed over 3 minus 24 times 6. And then do the second part of that, which is minus 4 squared over... No, just 4 squared. Um, minus 4 cubed over 3 minus 24 4 and then we're going to take away whatever we got for this and if we shove in 0 minus 0 so let's work out the various values so we got 5 times 6 squared minus 6 cubed no Oh, in the wrong area. Right. 5 times 6 squared minus 6 cubed over, no, over, sometimes it's just hard, <laughs> over 3 minus 24 times 6, so that gives me minus 36 minus um, 4 squared minus 4 cubed over 4 squared times 5 equals minus 112 over 3 and then I'm going to take away minus 112 over 3 minus 0. Okay, so the first part ends up with minus 36 minus minus 112 over 3 just for interest, if you were doing it separately, so that's 4 over 3. Minus, minus 112 over 3 is the second answer. So I've got that minus, minus 112 over 3 gives me 116 over 3. Brilliant. And that is the answer. So diagrams are important. If you didn't do any, you probably made a